khaki crew. They have 10,000 men. They block us from the top of the hill and no one will catch them. So stay on to We're on from 10 till 4. With loving vibes for everyone who could ask for more. Welcome back to our show on Alternative Radio. In part one, we saw a specialised radio station that broadcasts to factory workers. It's strictly legal. But there are some people for whom the spirit of the pirate radio stations who broadcast from 1964 to 68 lives on. Although they are illegal, they prefer to call their stations free radio. Every weekend, if you know where to find them, stations like Radio Telstar, Radio Invicta, East London Radio and Radio Jackie defy the authorities and the weather and broadcast from heavily guarded secret sites to the London area. The airwaves in Britain have always been strictly controlled by the GPO. For eight and a half years, Radio Jackie's crew have played cat and mouse to the post office and still managed to broadcast illegally to South London almost every Sunday. If you turn the dial between Capital and Radio 1, you might have heard their mixture of music, jingles and local ads. They are, however, strictly illegal. One argument used against Jackie and similar pirates is that they are using vital airspace needed by emergency services. I put this to Radio Jackie's founder and longest serving crew member Nick Catford when they'd arranged to show us how they usually broadcast. For legal reasons they weren't transmitting. Some of them are on the broadcast part of the VHF band. They could be moved. Um, in all other European countries, they have been, have been moved. There's plenty of room elsewhere. Um, they, they always come up with the argument that there's no room, but there is room. They said there was no room for the commercial stations, but they soon found it. When, when, when the uh, Sound Broadcasting Act was passed, they found the room. And um, they say it's against international agreements. But international agreements don't cover transmitters um, of less than 2,000 watts. And to cover, say, an area like Croydon, you, you'd need nothing like that power. But if you're low powered, you can use directional aerials. Um, to give one example, um, LBC, Piccadilly and BRMB all broadcast on 261 metres. They don't interfere with each other and they're using considerably more power than, we're, than, than we would want. So that there's room, um, it's not breaking any international agreements. It's just a matter of getting, getting the laws changed to allow this sort of system to operate, as it does in many other democratic countries. Jackie is attuned to freedom on the air for over eight years to London, Surrey and the South, to many thousands of regular... Nick, why did you decide to set up Radio Jackie in the first place? Um, it was uh, back in 1967 when the uh, government closed down the old pirate stations, Radio Caroline and Radio London. Um, there was obviously a gap created uh, Radio 1 was introduced, um, a national service, but what we wanted to see was local commercial radio, local community radio stations, and this was back in 1968 um, when we first had the idea for Radio Jackie. Um, we thought we could provide a local service for South West London, and uh, it took quite a while to set it up actually. We uh, had difficulty finding any equipment. We knew nothing about radio at all. Um, all, all we were basically were, were, were listeners, members of the public, We've been listening to the pirates, we enjoyed the service the pirates have provided and, and we thought that such a service uh, should be legalised. What sort of things were you broadcasting in those days? Uh, well, li listening to some of the old programmes, I don't know um, why we were broadcasting them actually. It's uh, pop music, um, but it was very, very amateurish. Um, it was very, very bad. I think things have improved a, a long way, a, long, a lot since then. Um, but we, we were broadcasting pop music. We're broadcasting pop music now um, with... with local news, uh, charity advertising, um, some commercial advertising. But it's, it's basically pop. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a part-time radio station. Um, you know, all the people involved are dedicated uh, to the introduction of commercial radio, but they've all got other jobs. Um, so we can only do it on Sundays. Now, a lot of people would say that uh, by the government bringing in commercial radio and bringing in lots more local radio stations that the reasons why you set up Radio Jackie in the first place have, uh, have got a bit lost because you've got a lot of competition um, Well, now. yes, they, they, they've, they've brought in commercial radio and, and what they call local radio, but can you really call it local radio? Capital radio, just to take one example. You can hear it halfway across the country. See, what we're fighting for is really, truly local stations. Um, 
for example, a station like Radio Croydon or Radio Wimbledon, um, run by the community, for the community, um, not the, the regional stations that, that we've got at the moment. This summer, Radio Jackie presents For Men and Women Round About Town, Radio Jackie T-shirts. These cool, white, sensual T-shirts come in three pretty sizes. Subtle small, masculine medium, and luscious large. Radio Jackie pre-record their programme on cassettes in a studio in a private house. Then each Sunday they go to a secret location where they put up an aerial, hook it up with a small low power transmitter, which is in turn connected to the cassette machine, and hey presto, one pirate radio station. Then comes the long hours of waiting in the woods, hoping the post office radio interference division doesn't track them down before transmission is completed. This is because they're breaking the law. The Wireless Telegraphy Act of 1949 says, no person shall establish or use any station for wireless telegraphy or install any apparatus for wireless telegraphy except under the authority of a license in that behalf granted by the Postmaster General. So Radio Jackie is acting illegally each time it goes on the air. Nick and his colleague A.B. Cohen explained how they evade being caught. Uh, normally there's a broadcast takes place, all is well. We have lookouts, cars around, walkie-talkies used, spotting for post office or should the police become sudden suspicious. Our main downfall is a member of the public who may be walking through woodland or an open park or next to the open park and see something suspicious going on, a group of people standing around, car batteries assembled. They phone the police, the police investigate. They don't know quite what it is. It all ends back up sometimes uh, with some of the staff of the police station. You mentioned people like Eric and Frisbee. Who are uh, they? We can't give their surname, of course, but there are known members of the post office who uh, can run reasonably fast. And do. And do, <laughs> yes. But they're, they're, they're from the post office. Yeah. They're following you. They're trying to locate where the station yeah, that's their is, job. is transmitting from. Yes. Yeah. When they found you, what happens? They then rush in to see who they can grab and what equipment they can get. It doesn't happen all that often, luckily. Have no, you lost I, a lot of equipment? In the past, in thousands the, in of the pounds past of we years. have. In the, in the last year or so, we've lost nothing, practically. Well, well, we've how been rather you, lucky. What kind of tactics are you using to evade being caught? Um, well, we've got a very, very good uh, security system, um, I think, which is the, the most important thing. And I think a thing that's possibly helped us is, uh, about a year ago, the GPO exceeded their duty and an assault took place and we took them to court and won the case. So I think that's um, possibly made them uh, be a little bit more careful about what exactly they do when they, when they raid a, a station like Jackie. There have been over a hundred prosecutions of Radio Jackie. Nick has gone to prison. A.B. Cohen has a suspended sentence hanging over his head. Although it is illegal for them to broadcast because of a loophole in the law, it's not illegal to advertise on Radio Jackie. But finding staff for such a fanatical operation can be difficult. What are you both getting out of it? I mean, are you paying yourself a wage? Are you making any money? You're getting wet feet, freezing cold, <laughs> sometimes a chase from the post office or the police. You're getting satisfaction? There's satisfaction. <clears throat> How yeah. many people do you think are listening? Sorry? How many people do you think are listening? 25, 30,000, something along those lines. It's very difficult to tell. Um, you know, we give out a phone number, we give out a, an accommodation address, um, we've conducted street interviews. Um, from that, we, we, we've uh, guessed at, at about that figure. What are the limits of the area that people can hear Radio Jackie in? We're aiming to cover South West London. Um, we're, not, as I said, we're not after regional radio, we want truly local radio, so we're not aiming to cover a vast area. Um, our service area is bounded by Croydon, Clapham, Richmond and Leatherhead. If you were made legal, how would you actually run a station that would be economical? Very, very easily. Rent offices. Buy a transmitter. That's one of the things we're opposed to, the fact that you have to, uh, at present, you have to hire the transmitters from the IBA, which is ridiculous. The money you pay for the rental each year is more than it would cost you to buy the transmitter. We would buy a transmitter, we would seek local advertising at very reasonable rates, um, similar probably to the rates of, of the local press, and I think we'd run at a, at a good profit, and I think we'd get a good audience. So the local advertising would, in effect, pay for the station? 
But then you, would, yes, if you yes. were legal, would have to pay performing rights on the records you're playing now. The, the, the offshore pirates paid that in the old days? We're, we're, we're not opposed to that. Very low indeed. We're, we're perfectly happy to conform to anything like that. But do you if, pay if we're that given the chance. Moment? No, we don't. No. No, if, if we paid that, it would um, uh, make it obvious to people exactly who we were. Isn't part of the attraction of what you're doing the fact that it is illegal and there is an element of risk about it? And although, as Avi says, you're standing in a field getting wet feet, at the same time you're doing something pretty daring and there's always a possibility of the police or the GPO arriving. Now, if all that was taken away from you... There'd would be you no cloak and dagger, you mean? Well, it's, would you well, still well, do it? Yes, and, uh, I wouldn't say that. To, no. me, to me, it's not part of the attraction. We like to be legal. Um, we want a licence. Now, I don't share in any of the risks myself anymore. Um, so, you know, that really doesn't come into it, as far as I'm concerned. I want to see Radio Jackie licensed. I, I want to see us providing a local radio service uh, for, for the community. What Radio Jackie and UBN show in their different ways is that localised radio, in touch with a small community of a few thousands, is possible and can work. What seems to emerge from the debate over the Annan report into the future of broadcasting is that we're unlikely to see many similar tiny local stations. In the studio, I have Rod Allen, editor of the magazine Broadcast. Rod, you heard what Nick Hatford said, that he would like to see a future with stations like Radio Putney, Radio Wandsworth, you know, Radio Tower Hamlets. Do you think that's possible and would it work? Technologically, it's just about possible. He, he's probably right in claiming that there are frequencies available. In economic terms, I think he's probably dreaming. I don't think that the economics of such an operation would work at all. Well, when I put the question to him, how would it work, and he said he thought local advertisers would pay and keep the whole thing going, do you think that's just a, a fantasy? Yes, I think it is, because local advertisers only have so much money, <coughs> and the kind of money that it takes to run a real radio station, even on the, the lowest possible level, is more than you can get out of a very, very small catchment area. That doesn't mean to say that uh, small local stations couldn't be operated under the present IBA system or something similar to it because the rental system allows small stations to be subsidised by large ones and that's a good argument in favour of something like the IBA system. But for eight and a half years he has you know, helped to run Radio Jackie and they've continued so nevertheless they must feel really strongly and they have local advertisers continually um, paying for advertisements to go on Radio Jackie. So in South London, there are a whole lot of people who think that this should happen. Yeah, but they've been, they've been running it uh, on a Sunday afternoon. They haven't have had to pay anybody any wages, for example. They've made their transmitter out of bits and pieces of government surplus. I mean, that's not really real radio, is it? But what's local radio like in other countries like Italy and America? Do these kind of tiny radio stations exist there? In America, stations down to the size of small towns, sort of 20,000 people, certainly exist under a, under a society which is used to advertising, which has a lot, in general, puts a lot more money aside for advertising. In Italy, because of a loophole in the law, a lot of small radio stations have just mushroomed up and have pirated a lot of frequencies and the constitutional court has been uh, made them legal through this loophole. But what's happened there is that people have got onto a wavelength, stuck with it, and they're answerable to nobody. There's no democracy in the system at all because they, no body representing the public has said, you are the right people <coughs> uh, to, to run a, a radio station. As a result, people who might have a legitimate reason for, for running a radio station are actually uh, excluded. Uh, the reason for having independent broadcasting authorities and all the rest of it is so that something that represents the public can choose those people who should broadcast and those who should not because nevertheless, despite the fact that there are frequencies available, they are still limited and they belong to the people. They don't belong to any pirate. But nevertheless, nobody asked for the pirate radio stations, but everybody um, felt quite sad when they were suddenly taken away from them. Oh, yeah, because they were jolly good fun, weren't they? Uh, yeah, and I, they served a purpose in that they got a, a different form of radio going in this country. Nobody knows that there's a demand for something until th there's something there for people to demand. Uh, and if there is a demand for local radio, and I, I think there probably is something of a demand for, for smaller scale radio than there is now, then I think the Annan report recognised that and there are, will be attempts made to satisfy it. But it has to be done inside a democratic framework. It can't be done by people just pinching wavelengths. So you think the Annan committee's proposal for a special body 
uh, that's set up to run local radio is a good idea and it's got to be run properly and organised from a central thing rather than people like Nick as long doing as, it as off their as, own back. As long as the body that does it is imaginative and flexible and creative, yes, of course, I do. Thanks. So it seems as though Radio Jackie may be the last of a breed rather than the beginning of a new kind of broadcasting. We'll leave you with a comment from Nick Catford. To some people watching, you say you would be a fanatic to keep on doing something which shows no signs of being legalised, to continually be arrested. And um, Haven't you spent some time in prison? Yes, yes, I spent 28 days in Pentonville last year. I think a lot of people have called me a fanatic, and I suppose I've got to agree, really. I, you know, I, I must be some kind of fanatic, but I'm dedicated, I'm really dedicated to, to the cause. We insult you then, send us your writs. We'll blow your trannies. Into bits. We're so groovy, oh, so groovy. We're Jackie. We're so groovy. Jackie, we're so groovy, oh so groovy. We've got no listeners, and we don't care.